Hello and welcome to RickyJordan.com. This is going to be the first video series of SolidWorks 2011. Uh, it came out uh, officially released from NDA about uh, almost a week ago now, uh, back on September 1st. So uh, this is going to be the first video where we dive into some of the functionality and uh, take a look at what's new. So to start with here, we're going to we're going to focus on the new well bead functionality. A lot of a lot was made of this at SolidWorks World, and uh, we're going to split this up into a two-part post series to uh, try to get into some of the details of what's available here. So, the example I've got here uh, is a part-based uh, weldment. So now it doesn't have to be a part-based weldment to use this tool. And uh, the second video will will throw some examples in on the assembly. Uh, of using the same this same function in the assemblies, but uh, this one's part based, so we've got a cut list, and you can see uh, we're indeed in a, a part file here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead, and I've taken the liberty of adding the well bead tool uh, to the command manager under weldments. Uh, so I'll go ahead and start the tool out here, and just to start with, where uh, what it's looking for is uh, it's going to store the weld paths that you create in the upper portion here and then your selections are going to be viewable in the in the uh, selection window down below under settings so we're going to set that to about a 3 16 bead and what I'm going to do is just do a couple of clicks here and say that I want to weld these two members together and upon the, the clicks of the faces there uh, the default selection is going to be just the the two or the intersection of those two faces now the default um, there's a, there's a couple of options here that we can vary from the default and uh, one of them is going to be tangent propagation what that's going to do is it's going to look at the intersection of these two members and it's going to carry that bead along until it runs into an interruption uh, between those two members and as you can see with this overhang here it's going to stop as it reaches the end of this member we also have the all around command which doesn't really take tangent propagation into effect and I've got a good example of that over here with the end cap uh, that we'll show here in a moment so I'm going to go back to selection here and just use tangent propagation and uh, we also have the ability to define the weld symbol uh, in this case I'm going to leave it in the, to the default but uh, as you can see here we've got uh, several different types uh, of, of weld symbols and uh, that can be defined you know you can use just about anything available uh, to define this weld in the annotation itself so I'm not an expert in welding but uh, looks like most everything's there so we're just going to cancel that out I'm going to go ahead and say OK and uh, let's take a look at the result here so what we have here is a rather generic lightweight weld a, just a graphical representation of the weld itself and uh, it automatically generates this uh, this annotation, this weld annotation for us, as I had mentioned before. All right, so let's dive into the next uh, example here. What we want to do is go ahead and put a weld uh, to show this end cap being welded to this tube. So we'll go back into the weld bead, and I'm just going to pick these two faces here, and it picks up again the default selection only, just where those two faces intersect. And uh, or if they don't intersect, where uh, where the line could be drawn, extended an in intersection between them. Uh, but this time, if I turn on tangent propagation, you see there's really no tangent lines here that'll allow that weld to propagate all the way around. So I'm gonna uncheck that and use the all around option. And if we go ahead and generate that, then you're gonna see that it was able to generate a nice weld bead all the way around. Uh, around that end cap. Now, if you're looking for perfect graphics here, um, this tool, you know, so you're not going to quite get that with this tool, uh, and we'll dive into that a little bit more later. Uh, really, what we're after here is is properly annotating uh, the weld, which is what this tool is going to be really good for. All right, so another example um, is the gusset that we've got going on here, and I tell you what, I'll just pick this gusset here, and let's say I want to show. Uh, some some welds uh, on all on both sides of this gusset to each of these members. So I'll come back into the command and first way I'm going to do it is just pick the two faces just like we've been doing. And I could, I do have a couple of options here that I just want to show off. I can come in and do an intermittent weld 
uh, we can weld on both sides and with that intermittent I can uh, I can do a couple of things I can stagger them uh, or I can define them by gap and weld and pitch and weld this is similar to what we saw in the old fillet bead command uh, so that I don't think it's anything new for the for those of you out there that have that have messed with this command before so I'm gonna again bump that back to 188 and uh, why that's the resetting to the to the odd number I think that's probably a, a beta 3 thing I'll have to look into that a little more but uh, but that's one thing I'm experiencing with it right now so we can do a couple things we can right click and select uh, a new well path and it automatically gets you set up for the next selection and it will remember uh, since you're in the same property window or property manager window it'll remember the settings that you had in that session so we'll go ahead and uh, accept that and click OK as you can see I've kinda taken a corner of this and, and defined it uh, you know fairly quickly but you know um, what if you want to you know speed go through that a little bit uh, with a little bit more speed there is another option uh, that is available that will help uh, in the speed department and that's going to be the smart weld selection tool so this time we're going to select that we're going to make sure that our our, uh, our weld size is, is set there and I'm going to come over and just draw across the faces that I want to select for this this weld and I'll just come in again and just do a tangent propagation on that now it will remember this setting and instead of me having to to end this path and start a new one what I can do is I can come over to the next one and just draw across another pair of faces and it creates the next one in line for me so you can see that uh, very quickly here I've created those three beads and everything looks pretty good for that uh, so let's come back around and uh, fill in now with the end caps and again I could just draw across these faces and uh, this time though I'm going to make this one all around and you can see the preview updates there I can come back in do this one rather quickly come down and do this one rather quickly alright so it takes care of all of our end faces and we got these gussets that we want to look at now so again I'm just going to draw across and this time I'm going to go back to selection and instead of doing all around I'm going to set this one to both sides okay and there's a little trick here when you're using this quick selection tools to start out on an unselected face if you're going from an unselected face to a selected current selected face like on this side start out on the unselected side and it works out a little bit easier just uh, kind of something that I learned from uh, messing around with this a little bit so we'll do it here and I'll show you what happens if you start on a selected face it kind of deselects it and then you kind of have to come back across and select again so that's uh, that'll save you a selection there we'll start out on the unselected face then flip over here for that alright so let's go ahead and finish that out as you can see we've got uh, you know we've added some welds pretty quickly there uh, let's come in and turn those annotations off here for just a moment and we've been able to fairly quickly uh, annotate our model um, with intelligence here for the weld but uh, let's also look at what it's doing in defining this is it's group the welds by size and you can come back and you can edit the features of each individual bead if you want uh, one option that is available is you also have the from to length which has a nice instant 3d handle which you can use to drag the, 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 the start and end points of your weld uh, if you want to trim them back a little bit in this case I'm gonna unselect that and use the default but the option is there another nice thing about this is uh, and it's it's good functionality um, maybe a little bit incomplete right now uh, it could be better but uh, again uh, very usable functionality here is the well be properties window so we can come in and type in values such as uh, steel for this uh, if you have a particular process you want to define you can uh, you can type in something there uh, I looked it up and uh, I'll try to include the, the chart if I can find it again uh, in the post here but uh, it's about 0 0.005 pounds per unit length and our units are inches here and when you type that value in uh, basically it's going to give you uh, the total weld mass uh, for this particular group of uh, beads you can see that there's 
there's seven uh, welds with a total of 41.2 inches. So it does a lot of, of uh, really nice calculations there. If you want, I'm going to take a wild guess here. If you want to say that uh, that your cost per unit mass is maybe for every every pound, uh, it costs maybe ten dollars in in rods. Uh, our total welding cost in this case is uh, for for 0.21 pounds is going to be two dollars and six cents. So you've got some options here on how you want to uh, how you can come in and, d and define this. You can even uh, put some definition in here for the welding time, uh, number of weld passes, uh, you know, stuff like that. So it's uh, it's uh, it's a nice little uh, start. Uh, I definitely would like to see this. Uh, functionality enhanced. We can come back in here. Uh, we'll go ahead and define out everything, uh, just at least for the material. Not going to worry too much about the cost there, but I'll get my weight. Now, uh, definitely enhancement request area. Uh, this mass uh, for these welds is not going to be included. And yes, I did this to you. It's off the screen. But uh, it's not going to be included in the mass uh, mass properties for this. So. Uh, you will have to track your mass property separately for now. I'd uh, like to definitely see that in 2012 uh, enhanced, or maybe in a, a service pack of, uh, of, of 2011 would be great. But uh, there's definitely, a, it's not an easy thing to do uh, from a standpoint of making sure that uh, not only the weight is updated, but the CG moments of inertia uh, calculations are not are, are still accurate in, in including items like this. So, um, you know. If it takes a little bit longer to get that in, uh, you know, I can see how that's that's probably the more difficult task to do. But anyway, that's the basics of the modeling environment here. Um, I'm just going to show you a really quick uh, on the drawing side, kind of what's going on here. We're just don't even have views set up yet, but uh, I'll just come in and pop in a couple of views real quick. And we can show some of the things that are available. Let's do uh, a graph. I'll just do uh, the standard three views for now. And um, what you can do is you can include those uh, those lightweight beads uh, in your model items. So we're going to say uh, entire model. Uh, I'm going to turn off dimensions just for a little bit because I want to focus more on the annotations, the caterpillars and the end treatment uh, conditions that are going to be defined here. So go ahead and select OK. And uh, what it's done is if you look into the views, it's gone in and put uh, end treatments okay, and caterpillars automatically uh, in all the locations that, uh, that we define the well beads. So definitely some nice functionality. Uh, I've got by default <laughs> Accidentally here, I've got center lines, so that's what those lines are are there for. That's uh, that's an error on my part, but uh, nice to see that in the in the drawing package itself. And the interesting thing about this is that you can actually select a line and define a custom caterpillar as well. Um, if if you want to define the caterpillars in a drawing, and you're not necessarily using the well bead uh, command itself. You still have that capability. Uh, in the drawing environment. So that's all for the first part of it um, for part one here. Kind of a long video, but um, what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, you know, in the next video, we'll show a couple of more uh, complex, uh, you know, more complex weldments, and then I'll tell you a little bit about some of my thoughts on it. I think this is a good tool. Um, could be better in, co in a couple of areas, and I, th I definitely looked. Uh, to have uh, for them to have some enhancements uh, for this, but in general, I think um, the purpose of this tool was to get us uh, something that uh, is not going to interrupt assembly performance for large assemblies, which is very important, and allow us to add beads quickly or to annotate well beads quickly, and uh, and then thirdly, uh, to be able to go across uh, uh, complex intersections, which uh, I can tell you for sure that some of these intersections that we had up here. Uh, was not possible uh, using the old fillet bead command. So uh, definite improvements in that department. Well, anyway, that's all for now. I'll see you folks next time. Stay tuned. More to come.